Hello everyone. So today we are present with another case. In this case, we will discuss how to choose an antibiotic in a specific situation, right? So we have a 70-year-old woman admitted to hospital with acute decompensated heart failure because she had ischemic heart disease with systolic dysfunction and she was well managed at home until this time. So treatment of heart failure started. She was put in NIV, then GTN given, last six given, and she improved a little bit. But her WBC count on admission was 21,000. And urine had 20 to 25 per cells. Because she came from home, from community, she was started on amoxicillin and clavulonic acid. The next day, the culture and sensitivity report came and it suggested urine is growing E. coli and this is the resistance pattern of the bacteria. So what is the antibiotic preference right now in this patient? Evolution of beta-lactam antibiotics. So in the beginning, in the beginning the beta-lactam antibiotics are produced, they are active against most of the bacterial pathogen. But then gradually they developed the beta-lactam enzymes. The bacteria, they started producing the beta-lactam enzymes. So now the initial beta lactam antibiotics they are not effective to the same bacteria because they have produced the beta lactam as enzymes. So now the scientists they have produced what we call as beta lactam inhibitors BLI. What are the BLI? We have clavulonic acids, we have sulvactam or tazobactam. So we have what we call as BL BLI combination, right? And they are are active against most of the bacteria but then the bacteria again produced an another enzyme that is called extended spectrum beta lactamage what you call as ESBL organisms so the ESBL producing bacteria they become resistant to most of the previous antibiotics including BLBLIs right but then we produced carbapenems so the carbapenem is active against all the ESBL producing organisms, right? Then there is carbapenemids, then we have polymixes, so right? So in this way, this is a very short and schematic diagram of how the beta-lactam antibiotics, they progressed over time. Beta-lactam is when the bacteria produce beta-lactam ages, they are actually resistant to the penicillin group of drugs plus early generation cephalosporins, right? So the bacteria will be resistant to amoxicillin, penicillins, ampicillins and first and second generation cephalosporins. Right? So when the bacteria produced ESBL, that means by definition of ESBL, the bacteria is now resistant to above means the penicillins and early generation cephalosporins plus late generation cephalosporins for example the third and the fourth generation cephalosporins that means septraxone that means what septraxone cefotaxime septazidim cefepim right all these things plus it will return to astrium right it is monobactam antibiotics so this is the definition of Yes. When you are reading an antibiogram, you must focus on what are the antibiotic this bacteria is resistant against. If they are resistant against these antibiotics, that means early plus late generation cephalosporins plus monobactam, that means you are dealing with what you call as ESBL organisms. Of course, most of the antibiogram will write it ESBL, but we have, we have to have this knowledge why we call this ESBL so the extended spectrum beta lactamages now we have carapin images so they will be resistant to all of the antibiotic above all these antibiotics plus carapinums so we have then polymyxis right so in our patient patient had UTI which is sufficient enough to produce a exacerbation of heart failure that means this infection we cannot take lightly so it is severe, right? So now, secondly, the patient has developed E. coli in the urine. 
you go to the anti diagram in our patient you will find our patient the e coli is actually resistant to cefuroxy which is second generation cephalosporin early this is third generation ceftriaxone cefotaxime cefotaxime ceftazidime all are third generation we have cefixime third generation second generation cefipim fourth generation right so we have you can see here both early and late cephalosporins are affected right so now also as i have discussed in the definition they will be resistant to estrenum also right so early and late cephalosporins including third and fourth generation plus estrenum classify this organism as esbl now one may argue why we, we are not giving piptazo or amoxiclav both are sensitive in this space right or nitrofurantoin time this is also sensitive why let us discuss see the for esbl e coli the textbook definition is the drug of choice is carbapenems so if you find the esbl organism in any patient you have to keep carbapenems even though they are sensitive to blblis why we find a patient is growing esbl e coli the drug of choice automatically becomes the carbapenems even though they are sensitive to the blblis why so because it it has been seen although they are sensitive to the blbli in vitro that means in the lab which our antibiogram is showing but most of them they are actually resistant to blblis in vivo so inside the body they are actually resistant but in the lab we find them as sensitive right secondly who are actually sensitive to bli and you give them bli blbli in vitro like amoxiclav or piptazo but they become resistant to bli while on treatment leading to treatment failures so you gave the patient blbli like piperacillin tetrabactam initially to sensitive but as the antibiotic is working on that bacteria it has become resistant to antibiotic while patient is been treated with the blbli so there is more treatment failure above two factors the drug selected in this case in our case will be carbapenems because you are dealing with a serious infection which can produce a heart failure so we have to give antibiotic that will be definitely working against our patient and that will be carbapenems in our case right thank you very much